Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to a day of prayer's morning Bible study. Before we get into a word, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the joy that we have in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that we can be a light in darkness, Lord. And Lord, that we can bring others to you, Lord. And Lord, we are also just thank you for your Holy Spirit who is with us continually, never leaving us, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you with us. We are glad to be able to discuss the word of the Lord together. It's an, an amazing thing. And um, we, we just ask one thing, if you're blessed by this, that you like the episode, that you subscribe on this or any number of the platforms where you can find a day of prayer located, and that you share it with someone else. First, so they can learn and grow in knowledge and relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then two, that they can be blessed. All right? And we yes. absolutely want people to be blessed here and through this ministry so that the gospel goes out all over the world to the four corners of the earth. So, we have a lot to cover today. We are going to skip ahead a little bit because we have now completed all the furnishings of the tabernacle, right? And um, so we're not going to reread how, or I'll say the construct of them, um, actually putting them together when Moses comes down from the mountain with the Lord and I'll say artisans step forward as the Lord anoints and their names are listed, which is an incredible thing in how they constructed or, and built, put together all these different furnishings that the Lord said to, to construct, right? As a pattern of what already exists in the heavenlies, okay? Well, we are going to jump ahead to chapter 40, where it's discussing putting all these things together after they've been made and built up, right? Actually putting together the Lord's house, in this, it's represented through the tabernacle. All right? Mm-hmm. So, yes. um, can I get a volunteer to read? We're going to go through chapter 40 in its entirety. Okay. Who would like to begin? I will. All right, promise? Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall set, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put in it the ark of the testimony and... And the propitiation of the ark with the veil. Partition off the ark with the veil. Oh, sorry. That's okay, baby. Partition of the ark with the veil. Mm -hmm. You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it. And you shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony. And put up the screen for the door of the tabernacle. Then you shall set the ark of the... Sorry. Then you shall set the altar of burnt offering before the before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. And you shall set set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar, and put water in it. You shall set up the court all around, hang up the screen at the court of, sorry, and hang up the screen at the court of the gate. And you shall take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hollow it in all its utensils, and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering in all its utensils, and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy, and you shall not. And you shall anoint the laver in his base and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them in water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. And you shall bring his sons and clothe them in tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me as priest. 
for the anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout the generations. Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. So Moses raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, put in its bars, and raised up its pillars. And he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on top of it, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, inserted the poles through the rings of the ark and put the mercy seat on top of the ark and he brought the ark into the tabernacle hung up the veil of the covering and partitioned off the ark of the testimony as the lord had commanded moses mm -hmm. he put the table in the tabernacle of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil and he set the bread in order upon it before the lord as the lord had commanded moses he put the lampstand in the tabernacle of meeting across from the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and he lit the lamps before the Lord as the Lord had commanded Moses. He put the gold altar in the tabernacle of meeting in front of the veil, and he burned sweet incense on it as the Lord had commanded Moses. He hung up the screen at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered upon it the burnt offering and the grain offering as the Lord had commanded Moses. He set the labor between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water there for washing. And Moses, Aaron, and his sons would wash their hands and their feet with water from it. Whenever they went into the tabernacle of meeting and when they came near the altar, they washed as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he raised up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting, because the cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from, the, from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. Whew! Amen. You got Amen. it. You did it. Thank you so much, you two. There is a lot there. And, um... So I have this question for everyone first, right? Because we were, in the last episode, we were discussing how the Lord is a, it's, he's a God of details. Mm -hmm. And we must follow in full his plans, his processes, mm -hmm. because he's God. Yes. But because we love him, we should be willing and desire to be obedient to demonstrate our love through our obedience to him. Mm -hmm. It matters. It is significant. And not because these things are burdensome, right? And we, were, we literally have been discussing the tabernacle and all the furnishings and every exacting detail mm -hmm. on how they were made and how it points to Christ, right? Right. Yes. Right, right. And heaven and the, everything that God is working and doing. Exactly. So... Mm -hmm. We have also said this. This has been a, a constant throughout this entire study. Is how the Lord is... Well, everything in this tabernacle is a pattern of what exists in the heavenlies. Two. Yes. Everything in this tabernacle is a representation of Christ. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because Christ being our pattern example, and this is the third thing. For us in our lives, he demonstrates how we are to live our lives before our God and Father. Right? Yes. yes. So we're going to make it abundantly clear here in this episode how everything points to Christ and how divine order matters. <clears throat> right? Yes. yes. So... You notice how it said it twice. The Lord gave instructions first, yes? Yes. yes. And then you saw Moses carry out the work, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. What was the first thing that Moses set up? Uh, as far as articles of the furnishing. Yes, he set up the tabernacle first with the boards and the sockets. But what articles uh, or what the furnishings for the tabernacle? 
So the ark was I, first listed in verse 3? Is that what we're talking about? Yep. Is and that what you're asking about? But and in then, verse 4, it says what? Bring in the table, right? Mm. So verse 3 says, put the ark up. Yep. Put the ark in and then put the partition up. And then bring in the table. Bring arrange, in the table. And bring okay. and arrange the things to be set in order on it. Okay. So the table of showbread, right? Yes. yes. Can I get a volunteer to read in John chapter 6, verses 35, 41, 48, and 51, please? Yes, more voluntold than volunteer today. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still happy to read those. I appreciate you, brother. Yeah, just having any willingness. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> so John uh, chapter 6, verse 35. Shifted on me. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. Then verse 41. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Mm. And then verse 48. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. Oh, the one before that, brother. That's 49. Oh, I am the bread of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all right. And then finally, verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Mm-hmm. Jeff, I think he was kind of clear there. Amen. He made it abundantly clear. Amen. <laughs> there's, there's no... There's no way to argue with that. Uh, he made it very clear. And notice, this is the this is the first, if you will, if you study out the book of John, this is the first I am statement that Jesus declares in the proper order, right? Yes. I'm, I haven't looked at it, but so, all right. Uh, so this is the first one. The second item that he declares is what? Or uh, the, for the ark, for the tabernacle, excuse me, is... The altar the, of gold. I'm sorry. The menorah. The light. Oh, okay, in verse 4. Okay, yes. I thought we were talking about everything on the table. So can I get a volunteer to read in John chapter 8, verse 12, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Mm-hmm. He declared that the second item what was the third item. The golden altar. And it was the door or screen, right? Honey, you're gonna have to tell us what these okay. items. Okay, I'll just, I'll just. <laughs> We're not tracking. With well, you y'all already. read it, so I was, just, I was <laughs> trying did, to. But, but that's okay. Okay. The next item All right. is the door. Okay. Yeah, uh, the door, so sure. can I get a volunteer to read in John chapter ten, verse seven, please? I will. All right, promise. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of a sheep. He is the door. Um, The very next item is the altar. I am the good shepherd, right? So chapter 10, verse 11, please. I will. All right, Layla. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Hmm. Do we see that connection? Talking about the altar? He gave his life for us. So the altar, yes. the offering goes on. Is that what we're talking about? Exactly. Okay. Altar goes oh. on the offering. Okay, yeah. so he the made that. The offering goes on that altar, right? Exactly. And it had to be a lamb without spot or wrinkle. Spot, or wrinkle, or blemish. The sacrificial it, lamb, yes. Mm-hmm. Could be redeemed with other things in the Old Testament, but we had the perfect sacrifice. We had the perfect. Right here in Jesus. Amen. Exactly. So. And, but he also said where he was the door, right? He said, uh, you know, he says that he declares that I am the door, right? Mm-hmm. But um, in other places, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Actually, so the Which fifth is coming shortly. <laughs> it is yes, and um, the fifth thing is the labor. What does uh, John ch- uh, chapter eleven verse twenty five say? The 
That's mine. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. We talked about the, the labor being for resurrection. It was yes. also for purification, but it was resurrection. A symbol of our death, burial, and resurrection in Christ. And all things, old things being passed away, behold, all things become new as we come into Christ. We are new creations. The next thing. There is the door to the courtyard gate. Uh, can I get a volunteer to read John 14, verse 6? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he gets into the anointing, and this is in Exodus 40, the anointing of the priests. All right? Yes. yes. Can I get a volunteer to read John 15, verses 5 through 8. I will. I'm the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So do we see how Christ said this is how you set up the tabernacle and gave these specific things in order, right? Yes. Okay. Or, or and by set up, I mean erect, construct, put in order. We know we're talking just in the previous podcast about divine order jesus himself did things in the proper order because he was always in the perfect will of the father Mm -hmm. so it was easy and and i'll say it in this way that was his desire so he could put aside his will in order to do the father's will and we see how the father brought this to pass and then had him declare it in order right Mm -hmm. yes yes in the exact order that the tabernacle was to be constructed that was the order given to the priests on how to set this up was the exact order that christ went through it but not only that right so if we've looked if anyone has seen a layout of how the tabernacle is is um set up right You'll notice that there, everything is pretty much a straight line. Yes? Um, yes. With the so exception of two items. You mean like the way they're shaped? They're shaped in... No, no, no. If, if you like were to from walk the door, from... The from, entry point to coming into the court. Exactly. All the way to the Holy of Holies. Everything is there in a all but straight line with the exception of two items. The golden lampstand or menorah. Excuse me. And the table of showbread Mm -hmm. yes proverbs 3 verse 16 says this well actually it's really um it's really verses 13 through 20 and i'll read that it says happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand is riches and honor. In her ways, uh, in her ways, excuse me, are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain her. The Lord by his wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. His knowledge, the depths, by his knowledge, excuse me, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. Mm -hmm. So I read that because you see a couple different things. Verse 16, length of days is in her right hand. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then riches and honor were in her left, 
right? Yes. But then it talks about she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Mm -hmm. Okay? If we look at the, the tabernacle and how it's constructed and laid out, and there are a number of verses. I mean, bear with me one second here while I... We're, we're doing a lot of running around here in Scripture. Um, so it talks many times in Scripture about the Lord, right, who upholds our right hand, or His right hand upholds us. Mm -hmm. um, your hand will lead me. Your right hand will lay hold of me. Do we... Um, there are a number of scriptures to talk about the Lord's right hand, right? Mm -hmm. John yes. 1 says it this way, that in him, in Jesus, was the light. And he was the light of all men, right? Mm -hmm. How else yes. would the Lord lead him if he was not the light, right? Would our right, his right hand lead us, okay? Mm -hmm. So then, clearly, the light would be a representation. The light would be a representation of what the Lord's right hand, Right? Which means the table of showbread would be on the left. Bread and riches and, and all those things, right? Yes. So if we look at how the tabernacle is laid out, it is in fact in the shape of a cross. Amen. The tree, all who, how to, how to phrase it? She is a tree of life to all those who take hold of her. Amen. So the Lord very clearly laid this out so we could all understand. Amen. who he was talking about in constructing the tabernacle, but also how this applies to our lives, mm -hmm. was there was a reminder. The Lord said this from the beginning. Wow. Amen. And showed, displayed, demonstrated how he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. So in, in Christ is our forgiveness for sins. In Christ is our cleansing from all unrighteousness. In Christ is the light to guide us, right? Amen. In Christ yes. is the wholeness, restoration, and healing that comes from partaking of his body. In Christ, our, our prayers can be answered, right, and heard mm -hmm. by God because we're coming through the door. And then in Christ, we have access to the Holy of Holies, to the Father mm -hmm. that is granted only by him. Amen. And, Amen. and even the altar, right? The altar of, of incense being, I'll say, prayers are at the heart of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'll just say it in that way. But then, who is our Lord, right? It's the one that is the mediator of a better covenant, right? Yes. Between God and men. And Colossians tells us that he is the head of the church. Mm -hmm. The highest point on, if you were to put up a cross, or overlay a cross on top of the the tabernacle layout. And not just a tabernacle, because this is the same design and layout, if you will, for the uh, the temples, right? Solomon's temple and the second temple. Yes? Yes. yes. Um, there are some subtle differences, like the number of tables uh, with bread on them, right? However, this is the Lord showing us, demonstrating proving to us who he is and what he was going to do for us as a pattern and example of how to live out our lives before our Heavenly Father. Yes. So I know there's a lot in there. So we're going to pause for today and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And um, we'll resume this again tomorrow or on the next episode. John, just real quick, we'll yes, remind our listeners, if you would like the visuals, especially today, to follow along, if you'll send us an email at a day of prayer, at, I'm sorry, ministry at a day of prayer dot org. Mm -hmm. Got to get the new one right. So send us an email, <laughs> request it, we'll get it to you. Uh, it's a really cool visual to follow along with um, what was just discussed. Amen. Thanks, Thank you, Steve. brother. I appreciate it. And can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for the covenant that you've made with each and every one of us, Lord, that we would be your son or daughter, Lord, and you would be our God. 
Lord, we just thank you for the strength that you've equipped us with, Lord. We thank you for the guidance by your right hand, Lord. And we just bless your name for being the light in the world, Lord, and allowing us to partake in that as well, Lord. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your abundant mercy and your forgiveness, Lord, and your blood that was shed for the remission of our sins, Lord, that we may be clean before you, Lord, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, God. Mm -hmm. And we just thank you for our right standing and that you have clothed us with robes of righteousness, Lord, and you have given us joy instead of mourning. So we just thank you for who you are. In Jesus' thank name, you, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through A Day of Prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.